We will talk about new stuff, about continued practice. Thank you, Dora, for inviting me. This all started when Doran gave a mathematical elegy to Herbert Wolf. And he was wearing a t-shirt, which was a Calpian Wolf t-shirt of the Calpian Wolf tree. And that really fascinated me. And I'm not going to put the Calpian Wolf tree up here. I'm going to put the Stern Broke Oak tree. I won't say that I'm exactly bipartisan, and I don't know which one is Democrat or Republican, <laughs> which tree is Democrat or Republican, but I, I prefer this tree. And I will start, I will draw the tree up for you and show you a simple rule, simpler than the usual rules, which put unnecessary vertical lines which represent medians which I think really messes up the picture. So we will start. Here. Every entry will be a fraction. This, of course, doesn't make much sense. But we take the, whenever we go around a bend, we take the median. The median of two fractions is the sum of their numerators divided by the sum of their denominators. So we'll take the median here. 1 plus 1 is 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. We do it again. Oh, if we're going straight now, this is an arithmetic sequence with ones, a difference of one. This is an arithmetic sequence with a difference of zero. Now we're going around a bend. So we take the median. Zero plus one is one. One plus one is two. Now we take the sequence with difference zero in the numerator and a difference one in the denominator. Now, I could fill out the whole tree this way. Here we're going around a bend. It's an infinite tree. I'll tell you some properties. 1 plus 2 is 3 for the numerator. 1 plus 1 is 2 for the denominator. Here we're going around a bend, so we take the median of the two fractions. 1 plus 1 is 2 for the numerator. 1 plus 2 is 3 for the denominator. This has the same property as the Calpin Wolf tree in that every fraction occurs exactly once. But it has an extra property that I want to exploit and what got me interested in the, what I'm going to talk to you about today. The difference, one main difference is that these are in order. In the Calcan Wilk tree, they're not in order. So these are on each row in order. So what is it in the order? You have A over B, what is it then? Okay, and it's like a wave tape. Not as simple as, as oh, that. No, you, so you've got to say whenever you're going in a straight line, you're going to oh, so it's more complicated you're going in a sequence. So have that's a property. It's both more complicated and less complicated. Yeah. What I'm going to do is show you what got me interested in what I'm going to talk to you about today. Looking for an eraser. Here we go. I'm going to erase this. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to start with 0, 1. I'm going to go down here to 1 over 1. I'm going to go down here to 2 over 1. 3 over 1. Then I'm going to go back. 2 plus 3 is 5. 1 plus 1 is 2. I'm going to go down here. 3, 5, 7. 1, 2, 3. 3, 5, 7, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I'm going to go back here. 9 plus 7 is 16, the median. 3 plus 4 is 7. I'm going to go down here again. 9, 16, 23, because we're adding 7. 4, 7, 10. Now what am I going to do? What I'm 
we're going to do is, I'm going to circle that. I'm going to circle this. And we're going to circle this. The circling starts where a new path starts. I didn't really want to take 3, 3, 30, but I did. So what I want to do is this. I want to take this continued fraction. But I found out, and now I want to write what that fraction is. But I don't want to go through all that messy stuff. I teach this at Patterson to 111 students how to write the fraction corresponding to that. And they're really doing amazing. These students are below pre-calc. And they're getting things like 29 out of 30 right. So how do I write this? What do I do? First, I write these three numbers down in reverse. It's easy here. <laughs> so, what I, but I always write them in reverse. Now I do this. I put a 1 and a 0. I know a lot of you play chess. Here's a little algorithm that I found really sells well. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 0 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. 3 times 10 is 30 plus 3 is 33. I'm sorry. Um, I'm supposed to get 23 over 10 here. That's not a part of it. So it really does make a difference. What do I need to do now? Backwards. 3, 3, 2. 3, 3, 2. And lo and behold, there's my fraction. This algorithm also works for numerous things, like expressing the GCD in, as a linear combination of the two numbers. It also helps me choose a pair of numbers if I'm given their quotients in advance when I do the Euclidean algorithm. Amazing algorithm. Now, so now we're into continued fractions. Well, from the paper I handed out to you, you see that I became interested in, we can cover this up, I became interested in the question of For example, you have to multiply. This represents the continued fraction, the shorthand for this. And these are called the convergence of the continued fraction. I got interested in that question. In other words, I wanted to write that as a continued fraction. Before I did that, I wanted to write this double that as a continued fraction. And now, rather than go through that, I'm going to use Paris, which I'm pulling for. Michael Somos got me into using that because it's open source. It's free. By the way, what you mean by that is you don't want to convert that continued fraction to a rational, then multiply by 3, and then go back converting into a continued fraction, you want to uh, short circuit that somehow. Believe it or not, the algorithm that I use for that is the same one I showed you there, that I put over. So now I'm going to go to Paris and use the program. I'm not going to go through and do all that messy stuff. That's ridiculous. I did do it. I had a thousand pages. Of stuff. I was doing all this stuff by hand. And I said, wait, there's got to be a better way. So, I got it set up. So, I hope everybody can see this okay. Is that print, la is that print large enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, Are, can we get a, a couple of copies of the paper that we gave out? Absolutely. Absolutely. Need more than that. Take take this many. That's not right. Thanks. 
By the way, I'm not going to talk on what I'm passing out. That's only to get you into the mood because that's what got me into this. I have a whole theory of how to, how to multiply any continued fraction by two and get, a, and get the continued fraction of that. Gosper has a much better way, but it's very complicated. So I think I, I like my method better than Gosper's, but I haven't talked to him yet. Now, what we're going to do is, we're not in the program yet. I want to look here. I want to start at zero. And I want to do this. I want to read. Whoops. I can't read anything until I go into GP. No. GP is par read. And the first thing I'll do is give myself more memory. Also, you have to you have to spell it correctly too. Yeah. Okay. Allocate. Yeah. The T was missing. Okay. That's enough. You think? <laughs> That's a lot more than more than you would have on a PC. What I'm using is the version of GP that is on RA, which you can reach from math. Now what I want to do is I want to read in a file that has my definitions. I should have showed you what's in there, but I'll, I'll, leave, I'll just tell you what it does. And this is um, I think I may have to go in there. No, I don't think I have to. Okay, that's the last thing that was in there. Now what I want to do is this. In there, you don't see this. It's hidden from you. But in there, there's a function called CFM. And what I want to do is take 2, comma, 1. Is that a dot or a comma? It's a comma. Comma, 2. We'll take this continued fraction. Typo. Thank you, Michael. And I want to multiply that by 2. That's the continued fraction you'd get. But what am I looking for? Well, I know that if I put enough ones in here, I'm going to get the same thing at the beginning and the end of these, this continued fraction. I'll talk to it as a continued fraction. OK, that's the convergence. So one isn't enough ones. So we go back in here, put another one in. Bingo. We get it. That's just what I want. Now over here, I'm going to keep track of that. You can't see this anymore. I'll put it over here. I know the light's not on here yet, but here's what I'm going to write. I'm going to write the number 2, and underneath it, I'm going to put the number 2, because it took 2. This is only part of that whole paper you see. Now, let's see what happens with 3. Well, with 3, I'm going to now be multiplying by 3. I, on the ends here, I could put something other than 3. I could have put almost anything, but there's a reason I took the 3. Whoops, they're not the same. This is always more than 3 squared. I'm looking to get the same thing at the beginning and the end, so I'll put another 1 in. No, not yet. Bingo! I get it. Now I've got what I want. So over here, under the 3, I put a 3. I don't have any paper on how to multiply things by 4, and I didn't really work out the theory, because at this point I got distracted by what you're going to see. I don't know whether I'll ever finish that. <laughs> now we'll go to 4. Now, of course, being mathematicians, you're going to say, well, that didn't work. So I'll put a second one in. Ah, uh, that didn't work yet. Ah, uh, that didn't work yet. 
What's going to happen when I hit the key? Tell me. Tell me. Take a guess. It's going to work. <laughs> Oh no! It didn't work! Ah! Oh, two, two, three, was, uh. Well, I better put another one in. So take a hot Let me put another one in. Bingo! It worked! So, under the four, I have to put a five. Mm. Can't fight reality. Am I discouraged? Sort of. But, what do we do? We press on. Now we'll put five in here. Is it obvious that once you have if you have more ones, you always get the same? You're gonna watch, you'll see. Hold on. It didn't work yet. It didn't work yet. It didn't work yet. <coughs> It worked! Uh oh. Six. Six gives me eleven. Thanks. Seven gives me seven. I don't know what eight, nine, and ten are, but they're not themselves. It's not fixed. Oops. Twenty-three gives me twenty-three. Whoa. Forty-three gives me forty-three. Hmm, those numbers look familiar, don't they? Now, I'm going to read another file. Because what I want to do is print out all the ones that are equal. Isn't that what you would do? Print out the ones that are fixed. Let's do that. So now, what's that zero number? read, and now I want to read perfect. Again, I'm not going to show you what's in here, it's sort of secret. Okay. Oh, uh, that's wrong. Sequence is one. That's where I want. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little out uh, a little iteration here. Four i equals one comma mm, thousands enough. You want to see a thousand of them? Should we get it? Okay, let's look at a thousand of them. Okay, and I'll copy from them I've got here, and I'll write this: if i equals a of, this is one of the functions that's hiding in that file that I read in. And where am I here? Um, there it is. Okay, i equals equals a of i comma ones, because I'm sticking ones in there. That's what the one means. i one. And, whoops, okay, i equals that, and print1, which means I won't have them vertical like that. You just write print, they'd be vertical. Print, and I'm going to print a of i comma 1, comma, comma, space. That, and now how many do I need? Uh, three. One, two, three. Okay, get ready. Here it comes. I didn't look correct. You have a syntax error. Do you really want two A's? Yeah, you don't want two A's. Yeah, call. definitely. Oh, there. No, 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 no. Whoa. Well, it's quicker than I could do it. That's for sure. I, did, I used to do it that way. You wouldn't believe it. I didn't do this many. I'm going to end in a minute. I only wanted to go up to a thousand. What's the next thing you do? I'll accept uh, <laughs> hints from the audience. I know what David Nason would do. Slow and OEIS. What? Slow and yeah. OEIS, right? Let's check it out. By the way, when I showed this to 
Conway at Princeton, he didn't believe it. I could also say, only print it if it's fine. And guess what you got? Same thing. So we got to copy them and put them in OEIS. Let's do that. Let's see what happens. We'll go up to 643. Is that enough? No, that's only 64. I don't want that. Okay, let's see. Two. We'll go up to 607. There, good. Control C for copy. It also interrupted. <laughs> yeah. I got two things going there, but that's no big deal. Okay, now what I want to do is go here to the OEIS. And I want to put the sequence in there, see what happens. Maybe, maybe somebody's heard of it before. Let's see. Control V. There it is. Okay. Oh, great, great. Too bad. Can't put, I can't submit this one. But it's the same one. Hmm, what the heck is that anyway? Primes dividing all Fibonacci sequences? Huh. Let's talk a little bit before I get back to that about Fibonacci sequences. Something you may or may not have learned about Fibonacci sequences. I'm not going to distinguish what I say today. I'm not going to distinguish what's conjecture and what's proved. So don't ask me, okay? You can take everything as true if you want. After all, I'm a professor, so you've got to believe me, right? Let's talk about the Fibonacci sequence. This has to do with the visibility of the Fibonacci sequence. We'll start off with 0 and 1. It's true that every integer divides some Fibonacci number. That's a fact. In particular, every prime divides Fibonacci number. <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to take this sequence first, my two. Now, if we take it my two, it's pretty easy, right? Zero plus one is one plus one is zero. One plus zero is one. Whoa, we're back where we started. So that means that from now on, everything's going to be the same. The period is three. If I do my three, I'll get a different period. Here's where the sequence comes from. If I look and only those entries, in other words, if I say, for two, the period is three, right? That was right. For three, the period turns out to be four. I'm not going to go through that to prove it. For so four, I did not understand what you did. I'm not going to go through all that for you. Just believe me. I'm telling you. No, no, I just didn't understand how the sequence was generated. So you take it mod two. But mod two. Oh, okay. And then you do it my three. And you have to multiply by the because the division of principle. And let's see, once we get this again, we're repeating, right? And for three, it'll be four. For four, it's going to be uh, six. Mm -hmm. For five, it's going to be five. For six, it's going to be twelve. For seven is going to be eight. Well, that's almost fixed. Except plus one, right? Hmm. That's what the sequence is. They're all prime. It's the same sequence. The same sequence I showed you. We check two, we check three, we check seven. Over here we would get 23. It is not prime. Okay. No, plus one. The ones that oh, are one is plus yeah. one. Plus one. one. Who different is one? Plus one. Yeah. yeah. When I did it was fixed, right? That's plus one. Oh, so also period is one more than right. one more. One more. Yeah. That's an amazing sequence. Um, 
somebody I'll talk about later emailed me that maybe if you assume the general the Riemann hypothesis, you can find the density of the set of primes. But it has an amazing property that if I look at all the Fibonacci sequences I can get by starting with two different numbers, those primes divide every one. Hmm. And there's no larger sequence of primes that divides every one. Well, things are getting interesting. <laughs> I don't care about multiplying stuff by two or three anymore. Primes, right? That's where we all, that's where it's grabbing all of us, right? Primes. Well, let's see. Hmm. Well, instead of doing that, maybe I could do this. Maybe I could say two times two, 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 two. Instead of putting ones in there, maybe I could put a two. But before I do that and get there, I want to show you something. going to get a set of primes. Let me show you that set. Now that's going to show up something different. So I'm going back to this. Let's move this up here. Let me turn the light down so you can do this a little bit before we come back here. Now, let's see. Where are we? Let's bring this back. 4 I equal 1,000. Um, hey, I'll just put a 2 in there. How about that? Easy enough, right? Ooh, different set of primes. Some of them are the same, right? Aren't they? They're not disjoint, are they? No, that's 43. Hey, what is the A mean again? A2 and A1? What? Up here? Yeah, no, I mean. Mm -hmm. This means that we're going to put twos in and keep putting more and more twos in uh -huh. until we get the same thing on both ends. Oh, I fit in until you get same, same set of ones? No, we use two. The beginning and the end are the same. Yes. That's beginning and end have to be the same. That's the very palindrome. That's the beginning and the end. Well, it'll be a palindrome when you're finished, yeah. Yeah. Because, oh, oh, no, it won't be a palindrome. Yeah. You start with a palindrome. That's the beginning and the end. Right. No, it won't be. Right. All right. Now, what do we do? Copy this. Let's see what that. Let's see what happens there. That's Control C. I didn't miss any of that. That's the first sequence. What? That's the first sequence. Go down. Copy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll start here. Three eleven, right? We'll go up to five seventy one. Whoops. I hate that. Okay, five eighty seven. Come on, come on. There we go. You're probably going to use something. Control C. Now let's take a look. See what we got. Go over here. Got to get rid of all these. Mm -hmm. I wasn't all the way to the right, was I? Just a quick way to go. Now this will be interesting, won't it? See what happens here, right? Control V. Now let's search. Hmm. What happens? Sequence. Whoa! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! That's me! Okay. Okay. So they hadn't done that before. <laughs> new, new sequence of primes. Threes, fours, fives. I think I put it up to 11 and stopped. I didn't want to be too greedy in the start with. Okay. Hmm. Very interesting. I wonder what would happen if instead of putting ones or twos, what if I put one, two, one, two, one, two, like that? You think I still get primes? Hey, let's check it out. That's the B function. Let's do the same thing that the other one did, but the B function's already there. So I'll do this, and now I will put a 1, comma, 2, and we'll, this is the B function though instead, and we will put 1, comma, 2, and that's the B function. Hmm. Oh, that's 
cool. Let's, let's, let's put it in the 